A Jan agradecerle, pero agradecerle a todo el equipo de Ilusión Macadamia, eh, que son quienes gestan y gestionan el proyecto de Alt Hopismo en Montpellier. Un saludo muy especial a Yves, con quien estuvimos en enero, conociendo el barrio tan único, tan singular en el que está ubicado Alt Hopismo. Ya de eso les hablará Jan. A todo el equipo de Ilusión Macadamia, como Vincent, su director, como Jean, quien va a hablarles a ustedes. Pero un saludo muy cariñoso a Michel Dupojo, que eh, se la ha jugado y que además es un hombre que tiene lazos profundos, familiares con Colombia y ha estado muy activo desde Montpellier en este espacio. Jean, donc, merci. On va t'entendre en anglais, déjà pour le faire dans cette langue que c'est plus simple pour tout le monde. Et c'est un plaisir pour Conexiones Creativas connaître le cas de Montpellier. C'est à toi, on t'écoute. Why, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, hopefully, hopefully you'll like our project. We like it very much. Um, just to warn you all, uh, this is a house with cats and dogs. So if, the, if you hear any barking or any meowling, um, forgive me in advance. I'm really sorry about this. Um, I'm going to go through the entire project, probably kind of um, focusing a lot on how it came about, the genesis of the project, um, what impact its um, territory had on it, um, what kind of governance it has, uh, what kind of impact that has on the project, what's um, its economic model. Um, and then we'll go into the spaces and I'll show you a little bit, um, some pictures, what it looks like, what kind of, um, how we use the space really um, now that it's kind of really functioning. Um, so first thing, um, as um, as we've mentioned, um, the the association that created um, La Tropisme, which is um, is called Illusion and Macadam or I and M. And um, this association was founded about like nearly 20 years ago. Um, and the genesis of this association was the realization that most cultural operators, especially small ones, weren't equipped to face the, the economy that we have in France today, um, the cultural economy. And so in response to this realization, um, INM kind of deployed um, three areas, uh, three main areas of expertise um, within the, the cultural sector. One was, is still, um, administration services. Um, another one is training and, cons and consulting. And the other one is artistic production. So um, it's all those, like all those points are really complementary and they help kind of drive um, cultural operators still today through the kind of a complicated world we live in um, and so having evolved into now a, a cooperative group um, and experimenting a lot on with um, responses to social cultural technological and now environmental changes INM has become a greatly recognized player in the social and solidarity economy in Montpellier um, its role it, it has two roles major roles um that kind of complement themselves are um an accompanist role and an operator role because obviously we accompany people and we operate as producers um and those two roles that's that's kind of that really complete vision of the world that's enabled us to um step forward at some point and open last year in January 20, um, 2019, a 4,000 square meter space that was inspired greatly by thir third places, which is called L'Altropisme. That's the project I'm presenting to you today. Um, this project kind of brought together um, the integration of positive social impact, professional base, um, dedicated a professional base dedicated to um, creative sectors and a social cultural um, function. The objective was and still is to create a living space with a plural vocation to echo um, the peculiar location it is in. 
um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it was created within what we call now the Creative City, um, and it opens onto four priority neighborhoods in Montpellier. Um, and so I'll come back on this. It's very important to us, but I'll, I'll, I'll um, talk more about this later. Um, what um, so within the, the last two years, because now it's 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 coming on two years, um, we've after opening we have now 230 residents in house professionals that actually rent offices within our space. Um, we've had over 120,000 visitors, and all that is sharing five over 500 events. Um, to try and all those events were created in an environment designed to really promote exchanges and mutualizations. Um, the context is has its importance. Um, for several years, obviously, the cooperative group, um, Illusion and Macadam Cooperative Group, um, has been in contact with the city of Montpellier um, to design a third place project. Um, as part of, um, of an urban um, development project on the site of the formal, um, former, sorry, uh, former school of infantry application, so an army site, the city of Montpellier decided um, to set up a cluster of companies, um, all from the cultural and creative industries. Um, that they named that neighborhood, that new neighborhood, they named it the Creative City. It's still a project where um, the Altropisme is the first stone of that massive project of actually creating a whole neighborhood around the um, um, cultural and creative industries. And it's it's a way to really bring together loads of actors from the region, from, from the city, from the world to kind of gather here and create that, that pool of, of creatives and uh, businesses. Um, it felt quite logical at that point for the city of Montpellier to um, contact um, Illusion and Macadam to, to help design and to, well, to uh, not help, to fully design that space. Um, that, and they basically said, well, they said we have within that whole neighborhood, we have a 4,000 square meter hall um, that was used before by the army um, to, it was a mechanical hall um, used to repair uh, tanks and army trucks and and stuff like that um, and so they said we have that space please design a third place project for us um, and that um, third place should occupy this 4,000 square meter hall for 11.5 years so it's um, it's not a permanent project as more as most of the third places are um, that was kind of the, the, the constraints of the project. We do it in this space and we do it for that amount of time. Um, so Illusion Macadam presented the project to its SSE network, which was really important, to several operators of the Creative City already involved, and to funders of the SSE working on projects with a st already a strong social impact. In October 2017, um, Supported by the agreements of the solicited, um, solicited, sorry, uh, partners, INM decided to set up a cooperative, a cooperative operating company called Tropism, um, that would be a part of its group and uh, made up of members associated with the project. Now it's that company um, that's in charge of the site development. Um, of operations over the whole period um, of of the whole yeah um, agreement of precarious occupation that we have and it's also that company that employs the people that run the place including me um, so that's kind of the the, the the context of how it was set up now um, the objectives of um, that project are um, are quite similar to the objectives of the of the group of the Illusion and Macadam group. Um, they are 
the future of work, um, how do we create work and how do we um, make it more permanent? Um, how do we build the city of tomorrow? Um, what does it involve? And how do we cooperate um, horizontally? Um, these structuring axes find their origins in the fundamentals of the cooperative, um, which are the support of operators, search for a positive social and, and environmental impact, and its primary role as a link between populations and artists through production, mediation, transmission. Um, in this context, we decided to design a third place dedicated to cultural and creative professions in Montpellier in order to meet a strong demand for collaborative venues on the, per on the perimeter of Montpellier and its region. Montpellier remains uh, really behind in terms of the number compared to other cities of the same magnitude, um, the number of third places or, or kind of um, uh, multi-view spaces. Um, although it, it is now the seventh biggest city in France, it's only got 20 similar spaces, um, but similar in the very broad sense. So 18 of those 20 are uh, just co-working spaces. Um, unlike, for example, uh, Lille, Nantes or Bordeaux, which benefit respectively from 46, 30 and 65 third places. Not to mention the dimensions of the project, both in surface, number of beneficiaries, uh, volume of activities. Um, so basically like among the commonly adopted typology, there is only one comparable space in Montpellier, which is a multi-use cultural third place um, called La Tendresse, but it's a much, much smaller uh, space um, with a lot less events. I mean, it's, it's a very small project compared to ours. Um, so really, L'Altropisme is still today the only establishment of this magnitude on the eastern side of the region, not just Montpellier. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the purposes of this project, um, Illusion and Macadam has set up an operating um, um, uh, company uh, called Tropisme under the form of a cooperative company of collective interest in a limited liability company. Um, so but this might seem a little bit uh, strange. I'm not sure what kind of the the um, legal um, terms are uh, in other countries, but that's the best translation I could find. Um, the, the, I, I find it's kind of it's interesting to to see the statute the statutory. Um, objectives of that company because it kind of structures what it kind of structures what we do and it kind of anchors um, what our objectives are, what our uh, values are, and it puts it on paper and it's legal and that's what we should move forward um, to achieve. So um, this company's um, statutory aims um, are to set up a third place on the site of the former School of Infantry application in Montpellier. It's to carry out within the framework of this third place the following three activities. Um, so we have reception and accommodation of companies mainly related to mainly or only uh, related to cultural and creative industries. Um, the production of services to those companies and to companies within the sector, and to organize events aimed to promote um, hybridization uh, and the economic development of third place users. Um, another one of its objectives are to operate and manage the place in accordance with commitments made to the project stakeholders. So, um, I mean, you, you'll say, oh, every, like every company has that um, aim, but we find and it, that in cooperative um, uh, companies, it's a lot more true and it's a lot more um, present. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that 
um, later as well. Um, it's a place of professional and social hybridization between organizations, entrepreneurs, and their audiences or clients. Um, we really, as a, a space, aim to question and reinvent practices, production methods, relations between operators, um, and really like the emergence of a third place like this on the Creative City site um, makes it possible to respond to several key issues to us uh, for the sectors and the territory. Um, some of them are facilitating transition and innovation, exchange and mutualize, um, offer an ex exemplary uh, tool for entrepreneurial, digital and creative communities, um, consolidate the CCI sector. Um, it's also to co-build with our residents, um, our in-house professionals. Um, it's to imagine a laboratory for new users to open to the neighborhoods. Um, and it's also promoting the, the identity of the territory. That's to say just a few things. I mean, it's just so many, many more things. Um, I'm going to try and show you a couple of pictures. Um, I'm not really good at this, but I'm trying, I'll am trying. i try and show you um, a few pictures of the um, site. There we go. The, the neighborhood, like basically the territory where it's, um, it's implanted. Um, so that's where we are. Um, where the little red cross is, um, and we're within four uh, priority neighborhoods. It's a very strategic um, place in Montpellier. Um, and also because the neighborhoods kind of evolved with this uh, military um, close neighborhood there. And so one of our objectives and one of our um, one of the things that we really want to do, is to open to those neighborhoods and to actually kind of break that wall that was always there because obviously of a like you know top secret military space so that's one of our aims is to open to those neighborhoods and kind of start to be uh, a part of their lives daily lives um so um, to kind of zoom in a little bit, um, so that's us, um, the little blue square, and all around here is, like all of this, is the creative city. So um, it's all being rehabilitated at the moment, uh, most of it isn't done yet. The creative campus has just been finished, um, so we kind of just saw about 900 students, creative students, move in, which is great. We're not the only ones anymore. That's brilliant. And um, But then there is life in all those streets and everywhere around us. So it's very important to us to not just stay within our little um, bubble here. Um, so I'll come back to, to um, more pictures later. Um, so to talk a little bit about the city, um, which is very important, I think, to understand where we are and what what we aim to do and uh, the context we evolve in. Um, Montpellier has had an extraordinary um, demographic growth over the past 30 years. Basically, we've doubled size. Um, and that's how we became the seventh uh, city in France, seventh uh, biggest city. Um, it's changed the sector. Um, uh, it's changed the the size of the of the city, of course. Uh, a lot more buildings, a lot more people, um, and it's still growing a lot. Um, it was before. It used to be just returnees, immigrant workers, um, and they kind of constituted a first flow, which has accommodated and inserted. Um, they were accommodated and inserted in new districts. Um, the development policy around technologies and the region's sunny disposition kind of further boosted its growth. Um, it kind, I think it, it, it grew about 8% in the last five years, which is crazy. Um, 
the territory kind of is defined by a face-to-face -face economy that's very important i think primarily primarily based on commerce service research and education a lot of education um the coast was never really the coast where like montpellier is quite close to the coast and that whole area was never really historically industrial industrial um with a lack of leading lead, it's just due to a lack of leading companies in the primary and secondary sector um but the area is recognized for its number of new jobs and businesses it's one of the highest uh, in france but it still has a very high unemployment rate and it remains strongly marked by difficulties in accessing employment i think that balance and that kind of contrast is very important to understand where where we're, we're evolving and what our space can can do and how it should probably work uh, at some point um so i'll i'll i'm going to go a little bit technical around the, the the neighborhoods but you'll understand why just to make it a little bit clearer where we are um according to figures uh, from our employment agencies uh, more than 40 percent of the population of the four priority neighborhoods around our third place knows a long-term unemployment 15 percent of young people under 26 are job seekers about um uh, one of the neighborhoods close to us uh, called Figuerol, for example, 24% of the working population is in precarious employment. Um, in fact, social indicators of these various districts located around the Altropisme are kind of worrying. Poverty rate um, of the um, Cité Gélie um, is about 50%, and the share of the population of Figuerol with out a diploma or less than the back is 43 percent the city is structured around the knowledge economy with an ecosystem favorable to startups and innovation um, she's currently focusing on on industries of creative uh, and cultural industries um, as evidenced by the the creative city project um, where we're located um so we have i think a major role to play in some sense obviously we're not going to solve everything like this but we're here to to be of service um so i mean it's it's a socially complex um um it's a socially complex context um and we find that these characteristics around the, the creative city um, were kind of, um, oh, sorry, I can't find my words. Um, those characteristics drain significant investments, um, like the creative city, I mean, um, and we, and it, it creates kind of a vitality and entrepreneurial vitality, um, and and all of that is within the immediate vicinity of those priority neighborhoods so um one of our challenges um is to is is social impact um to forge link between those two worlds like how do we um allow people um integration uh, seize opportunities um how do we mix those audiences how do we mix those people um and how do we yeah create kind of um, um a movement between the two and kind of um create more opportunities more business opportunities more education opportunities more cultural opportunities that's really the focus one of the main focuses of our project um to understand a little bit more, so I've talked about what kind of company we've created, and um, um, so I think what just what's important to understand it what is what the the cooperative model is in France. I'm not sure if it's the same everywhere, so I just wanted to um, 
to kind of point that out. Um, the, so being a, a cooperative company kind of brings the social impact in-house, inside the, the offices. Um, because a cooperative um, company in France works this way. So it's basically, it's not really a non-profit. Um, you can make a profit, but basically one person who um, buys into the company has one vote. No matter how many shares we've got, you can buy 100 shares, you'll have as many votes as the person who bought just one. Um, and then there is kind of the, the collective interest aspect means that the money is going to be redistributed. Um, so whether it's evenly through the stakeholders or it's usually just re-injected directly into investments for the company. Um, I think I think that's really important to understand um, in how it's how the actual company is created. What what does that mean? Because it's really important to us, and it's also I think really important in the way we work, in the way we do business, and in the way we've created that space. Um, so our economic model is also based on this cooperative spirit. <laughs> um, the initial fundraising um, was came close to 1.5 million euros. It was all or orchestrated by INM and um, it it evolved like so it was all orchestrated by INM. Um, it was a lot of risk taken only by this association like that's important I think to to keep in mind um, all kind of rested on their on their shoulders um, so that first um, that initial fundraising of 1.5 million euros um, was validated by private funders, um, mostly from the um, social and solidarity economy. Um, and that money allowed the works and uh, the opening of the third place. There was some money from Europe. There was um, a little bit of money from the National Center of Variety. Um, the, the, the full um, amount um, to to launch the project was 1.8 million. Um, but really what's important to us and I think uh, to understand in that e economic model and especially in France is that public fun funds intervene at the margin really rarely and only still on employment assistance and on project by project basis. So basically, um, in France where cultural projects usually just work like big cultural projects with the magnitude that we have are usually mostly funded by state. Um, we're not, we're mostly uh, privately funded, auto funded and especially important funded by the social and solidarity economy. Um, so that's how the project was created. Now the place functions today essentially on the benefits related to re the rental of spaces so our residence offices meeting rooms etc and um, the organization of private and corporate events um, and then the activities and cultural programming are produced by the association um, illusion and macadam and uh, on its own resources um, and the producers involved in the place so we kind of always have a kind of co-production um, uh, vibe going on. Um, and then other identities within the cooperative group um, are often called upon to financially support the cultural actions um, of the place in the short term. But it's kind of a, a um, give and take, give and take, give and take. Um, I'll explain a little bit more of that dynamic when I'll show you the spaces because I think it's um, it's important to to see that um, with the spaces in mind. Um, otherwise, I'll just be confusing. Um, now, if we think a little bit about who we're talking about, who we're 
who we're um, talking to, um, I think um, it's basically l'altropisme is based on a pluralism of audiences. Um, that's the main thing to 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 remember. Um, this constitutes its economic viability, um, just like its social function, a bridge between the most contemporary or cutting edge cultural propositions and the most popular, which have like all attracted a hundred thousand visitors um, within within the first year. Um, so it's it's the two like. We can't, one can't live with the other, can't live without the other, sorry. Um, so then from a, a kind of like more commercial point of view um, on its corporate and real estate, a corporate real estate, um, the Altropism has a B2B positioning targeted only on independents and companies from the cultural and creative industries um, and or from the social and solidarity economy. Um, we can, we can, um, kind of be a little bit flexible on those. Um, but to give you an idea, our occupancy rate um, with that targeting, our occupancy rate uh, was 80% at opening, uh, was 100% after three months. Um, and we've had to do expansion after six months. And now we have 230 people um, residing, actually working every day within the space. Um, now, on the corporate or private event side, we target more alongside communication agencies, large accounts and institutions. Um, it's that versatility um, um, that we, we also position, um, we also position, uh, let me start again, we also position um, our versatility on a transgenerational B2C clientele more. Um, so we'll have, it's important to us to play between the people within our, the neighborhoods around us who um, are not necessarily very attracted to cultural events with our, the professionals that work here and maybe kind of uh, maybe students that are studying in Montpellier and all of that. And that kind of makes the place. That's what makes it interesting and that's what makes it work. That diversity is essential to us. If without that diversity, we just, it doesn't work. Um, and that goes for audience and uh, for um, economic purposes. Um, so basically we can go and that's that's one thing that we love to say we can go from um a professional meeting in the morning um talking about cutting edge um innovation in the ccis then um have um loads of families and kids in the afternoon because we have um art workshops for children um all afternoon and then have like um more adults, niche, um, electronic music lovers uh, in the evening because we're welcoming a big concert, electronic music concert. And we'll, we'll have seen like a huge panel of, of audiences within the same day and sometimes even within the same night. Um, so basically um, that's that diversity that we love and that we kind of work on and, and, and push. Um, now to explain to you a little bit more what the space looks like and what it entails, um, l'altropisme is so 4,000 square meters interior and about another 4,000 square meters exterior distributed in a parking, a terrace, a garden. Um, we're open for our residents 24 seven, no problem. And we are open seven days a week for the public um with obviously not 24 hours a day but we try um and we offer loads of services i mean um just maybe not the most interesting thing to know but they have wi-fi and they have cleaning and maintenance and um they have um you know um shared spaces and kitchens and relaxation areas and um stuff like that like places to park their bikes and and all that stuff 
Um, so I'll show you a few pictures of the um, of the space. And so, yes. Um, so that's a floor plan of the um, of the third place. So that's mostly the four thousand square meters interior, but then you'll see also um, the rest. So all the green spaces are events or um, like public spaces. Um, then the blue spaces are all offices, um, rented offices. So it's it can be individual offices, shared offices, or open spaces. Um, and then the yellow um, bits are the meeting rooms. Um, so that's um, our wait let me come back uh, i wasn't finished um all of that so we have a huge garden we have our own web radio um installed in the garden we have um we have an outside kitchen uh, for the restaurant uh, right here the cafe that's our restaurant in-house restaurant um which i'll talk a little bit more about later which is a great um it's, it's has a big impact on our um, economic model um, basically our economic model kind of rests on the offices um, the cafe and also quite a lot on the other activities of the group which are uh, training which are um, uh, sorry consulting and things like that um, so those spaces, um, those are the common spaces where you can just sit at a table, um, have a um, have a little meeting there. Those are the shared spaces. Then um, you have the stage staging area, um, which we call the bridges, because we rehabilitated all of this. Um, so those big wooden panels were put on uh, what used to be used for um, to repair um, military tanks or military trucks so they used to put those on the bridges and repair them from underneath so um, we've created our, our stage on this it's it's a great stage we can it's very um, movable and and kind of flexible and it's very um, it kind of it's um, at the image of the space and the, the way the space works. Um, then we have here like a kind of exhibition space, the gallery. Um, that's now our dance studio, um, but which can also be used for any type of thing. I mean, it's an empty space, so it's very, um, very flexible, really great to use. Um, meeting rooms, which are like any type of meeting room. Um, that's our restaurant, um, which um, so all the whole design was done uh, by our um, by one architect and one scenographer, and so that's why um, it was really thought to kind of reuse the space and and kind of complement this this industrial, not really industrial, but military kind of um, abandoned hall into um, really more kind of warm. Uh, wooden spaces um, so that's our restaurant with the terrace and then we have we love kids <laughs> um, we love having kids all around all the time so we've actually rehabilitated a bus um, to have a little library for the kids and a little playing playing area um, and then we now have a big garden um, and that was kind of created also reusing um it's 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 a um a third place kind of um um gardening uh reusing the the earth from the area and um and plants from the area and and all of that um so that's kind of that's what the 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 place looks like so that's what the place looks like i think um, I kind of skipped the first video I wanted to show, but maybe we could um, kind of put the second one the, um, with um, images of our um, festival so you can see the place in action. I think it's important to kind of see it, breathe and live.
it was just it was just to um, give a feel of what the space can look like um, in action, um, because of course um, it's just seeing empty pictures of the the place doesn't kind of give you the 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 real use of it. Um, but I think the kind of like the little images that we've seen just now, it kind of shows um, how diverse um, the, the week, how how much diversity there is in in our our programming and in the, the our, maybe we don't see it, but in the audiences we have. Um, so I think one of the the good things to explain is is what kind of it means to us to be a, a, a to have a role of resource place like what is what is it to us to be a resource as a space um so even before it's opening the anthropism aroused a lot of interest um and um from other project leaders academics town planners etc um, through the recognition, obviously, of the association that created it, INM, um, in the social and solidarity economy and the cultural field, but it also um, it, it was also around its original financial package and its pioneering reference um, that the project attracted a lot of attention and a lot of people came to um, find inspiration and information on those. Um, on those models and on those innovations. Um, so obviously, as the first project of this magnitude, it's also kind of become a laboratory for the city of Montpellier, in particular in the uses around its services, so um, the services of the city. So town planning, economic development, culture, green spaces, smart city, loads of, of stuff like that. In terms of architecture and town planning, um, like, um, really, um, uh, so our architect and scenographer, uh, so our architect was um, Renata Aviani and um, our scenographer was Christophe Gout, and both of their incredible work were really noticed um, and um, it kind of created a precedent. Um, so it is kind of a reference place in terms of architecture. We have loads of architects within our residents. Um, we have a kind of ongoing uh, relationship and companionship with the National Superior School of Architecture in Montpellier. Um, so we and we're really interested in that. And that's kind of why our festival. So what the the, the little extracts you just saw. Um, um uh, is 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 really turned towards architecture and and the city and what what it means to live in the city of tomorrow um so that's kind of that's kind of what we see as a, a place of resource we we we're kind of we can try loads of little things we're a little city in ourselves and we're a little city that was built on um, on the SSE, on the CCIs, and and we kind of want to innovate in both all the time. And having 230 professionals who network, who live together every day, kind of really creates an emulation and a, a, a force um, um, not to reckon with, but also, almost. Um, so it's it's a really powerful kind of creation tool to be all together all the time. Um, really, I think one of the things also is the the magnitude of the the amount of events that we've created um, um, within the past two years, um, almost two years. Um, I mean, it's over 500 and I mean, it's only that because of what 2020 has been. Um, and through those meetings, we've really demonstrated our versatility. And um, we've really tried to create a lot of kind of um, uh, new meetings and innovation in the, t in the, in the way we do it. And um, it, like kind of innovate, innovate in formats, event formats, as well as content all the time. And it was kind of, yeah, the same week you can have 
um, a, a, a societal debate with thinkers or philosophers, um, then a workshop to build a network of cooperators, um, a giant barbecue, uh, um, and a Romanian cultural and gastronomic um, festival. It's all of that that brings all different kinds of people together. That allows us to really um, um, create new new how 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 do i say that um new relation new relationships like um new relationships new work because obviously people meet and exchange and network and create new projects and new things and it kind of changes the way um the, the way of thinking um you know it's it's different from having the same thing all the time and um and having loads of different things um so what's what, one of the big challenges was to actually make all of that readable like how do you communicate on this how do you make it um really yeah readable clear for the for the audience so we've actually structured a lot of appointments we have our professional meetings um twice a month we have several kind of formats um argentinian milongas we have every month we have um electro sundays electronic music sundays once once or twice a month you know things like that so it kind of makes it more readable and easier to access um we also have a well-being center um it, it's 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 that mixing of people in the formats that's really important um i Hi. think I'm yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do, do you think it's possible to start wrapping up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was almost. I'm almost done. Um, I think, basically, I think I've said everything basically. But um, it's, it's this new kind of way of creating companies. So this whole cooperative way of working. Um, for us, that's very important. Um, it's the life of um, 230 professionals from the ICCs, from the CCIs, sorry, um, that that kind of create loads of different um, um, exchanges and new ways of thinking and new projects, um, as well as being that kind of like tiny laboratory um, for the city, for the region, um, and where we can try loads of new things in terms of collaborative work, um, 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 cooperative business model, economic model, um, and um, and kind of ways of working together differently. Um, so basically, our 4,000 square meters are just dedicated to that um, social impact, um, new ways of making money, uh, or new ways of working together. Um, so it's very challenging. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to say it's easy peasy every day um, and mixing people who work every day with cultural events. That's kind of an everyday challenge. We, It's very difficult. Uh, people need quiet to work and we need to make noise with the music and the people. And, um, you know, it's it's loads of things like this. And obviously, and not having any subsidies from from the the government is a big challenge every day um but we we make do and we we love doing it that way and i think it's more interesting that way and it's more innovative and it's kind of what tomorrow is made of um that's it for me <laughs> Well, oh, Dan, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I would like to add just a few things out of my more than two pages of notes that I took while you were presenting. First of all, we would like to start with a big thank you, Jan, uh, thanking Yves, thanking Vincent, and thanking Michelle, of course. I mean, you know, the whole staff have been very, has been very committed with this project. So thank you all, guys. Send you uh, kisses and hugs from Colombia. And secondly, I would like just to highlight Two things. The first mm -hmm. one, which is very, uh, very, very powerful, uh, and I think is diversity. Diversity in terms of audience and diversity in terms of uh, your economic purposes, as you put it. And that takes me or take you to uh, this uh, 
very interesting framing idea, which is how to work and live differently. That, that, that we think is very powerful. And the second one, this, my, my second highlight is uh, your objectives. I, that, those are really, really interesting. The future of work, uh, if I got it right. Second, yes. uh, how to build the city of tomorrow, or, 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 or I should say the cities of tomorrow. And yes. secondly, how uh, to learn to work uh, uh, in a horizontal way, how to work in a cooperative cooperative mode. So um, I, I'm sure there are more highlights, but you know those are my uh, takes, uh, let's say, out of your presentation. Thank you, Jan, and again, thanks to all the team of uh, Le Altruism. Well, thanks for having us. <laughs> On the contrary, thank you. <laughs> Merci énormément, Jean. Je vais juste faire un résumé en espagnol pour te dire un merci. Et, sin duda, ha sido maravilloso conocer este caso de Jan, un espacio que antes era utilizado para fines militares y que gracias a todo este proyecto se ha transformado en un espacio para el emprendimiento, la danza y el arte. Mon préféré, sans doute, est le coin lecture. Donc, euh, j'ai déjà un, un espace dans mon cœur. Et, et, et je vais juste dire deux mots, Jean, parce que c'est très important, déjà l'emplacement qui a altropisme juste à l'autre côté des de autres projets de développement qu'on a pu connaître à Montpellier, comme Cartier les Antigones, les Dieux Halles, la rue Raymond Dugrand, avec tous les grands projets dans l'avenue de la mer. Et ce qui est très important, c'est ce projet que ustedes ont connu en cabeza de Jean du, du Chevalier, parce que Altropisme está justo al otro costado de ese centro histórico de Montpellier, un centro precioso, peatonal, pero que justo al otro extremo tiene concentrados los grandes desarrollos inmobiliarios de Montpellier. Al otro costado está Cartier de Santigón, el barrio Antígona, que se ha vuelto un polo, digamos, muy atractivo de la ciudad, que desde allí sale la calle o la avenida del mar y la avenida Raymond du Grand, con grandes edificios, con grandes desarrollos inmobiliarios y con un espacio, digamos, orientado a las industrias creativas más comercial, más parecido a LX Factory en Lisboa, que es Alvio Les o el mercado al lado del río Les. Por eso es tan importante política y territorialmente el proyecto de altropismo. Se por tout ça que el proyecto de altropismo es si importante. Y eh, justement, vos colegas de Lyon, en sachant que vous auriez parlé aujourd'hui, on fait comme ça. Et c'était trop fier de savoir que Montpellier euh, aurait la parole aujourd'hui. Donc, euh, Jeanne, Vincent, Yves et Michel, merci à vous. C'est un plaisir. On est fiers de votre travail. Et on compte euh, faire des choses ensemble après. C'est des liens si étroits. Donc, euh, merci, Jeanne. Merci beaucoup de nous avoir reçus. Nos gustan las distancias cortas. Te estamos esperando en www.cc.com.